Welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. My next project that we're going to be working on is pretty special to me because the fabrics that we're using are designed by my dear friend, uh, Bonnie Sullivan. Uh, it is called Ruby is the collection. It is from uh, Maywood Studio. And the quilt I designed to go with it is our chocolate covered cherries, which I is on our website, but there's a nice picture there. So if you want to sew along with me, you can go ahead and buy the pattern. It is a digital download on our website or even buy a paper one. But this um, collection is just, it's a very beautiful, very traditional, elegant collection. And I want to share it with you here as I fold it out for the, the beauty shot we have to take. So here are the pieces that go in it. Uh, we met Bonnie Sullivan on a cruise many years ago. We were both teaching on the cruise, and uh, I'd like to say we became good friends on that ship. We got to go see her in Oregon, and we just kind of see each other twice a year at Quilt Market and have gotten to know each other. Um, so I was very excited when Maywood sent me this line and asked if I would design a quilt to go with it. And this one is called Chocolate Covered Cherries, because I love... I love anything chocolate, but uh, this one just reminds me of that. Uh, again, I think this is named after her grandmother. I know on the Maywood Studio website, there's the whole story about her inspiration to this line. And if you're familiar with her all through the night patterns, a lot of times they're very whimsical wool patterns. And in this case, uh, this is a little bit off from her traditional stuff. And I'm, I'm drawn to it. I'm drawn to her really cute stuff, and I'm really drawn to this collection as well. And as you can see, it is just a lovely mix of reds, burgundies, golds, creams. This one is the gold creams, this beautiful taupe with leaves. Uh, here comes the big bouquet flowers. So I'm excited to start cutting it and get this done. Uh, we're going to do a step-by-step -step video for it so you can follow along if you want to try to make this. Uh, it's a fun traditional quilt. It has square to square, fine geese, and there is the beautiful border that goes with it that will go all the way around our quilt. So, so there is a sneak peek of Ruby by Bonnie Sullivan from Maywood Studio and follow along here in this video while we make chocolate covered cherries. Now it's time to start cutting our fabrics for our chocolate covered cherries quilt. As you can see we're going to be using Ruby from Maywood Studio and when I start cutting a fabric a quilt I get these little sticky labels and on all our patterns, we label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that also coincides with the cutting and all of the illustrations. So as I cut the fabrics, I stick a sticker on them that tells me which fabric it is. So when I'm looking for a piece, I know which pile to grab from. So I always do that first, and then we're ready to cut. The second thing I do is I put my fabrics in order, starting with A on top. That way I don't have to constantly be checking this and digging through. You just have to double check that you put them in order correctly the first time. So here is my stack of A through N. They're just so yummy. Then I take them over to the ironing board and I iron them. And I align the salvaged edge on each piece and press it so that when I go to cut, I can just grab it, cut it, grab it, cut it, and I don't have to constantly go back and forth to the ironing board. And I know I've lined them all up on the salvage. Uh, I did a video on basics of cutting where I talk more about how to align your edges. So you can check that one out on our YouTube channel, The Whimsical Workshop. And so we're ready to start cutting. I like to cut with the fold side towards me. And this is my ruler of choice for cutting quilts is my eight and a half by 24 Creative Grids acrylic ruler. So first thing we need to do is square off the fabric. This just gives you a nice straight edge to start with. And what I do is I align a horizontal line with the fold and I cut. 
Then you flip the fabric over and you're ready to start cutting. And that's because you square it up on the right and you cut it on the left. So let's get this cut. So for the first one, I need to cut 15 four and a half inch squares. I cut my two four and a half inch strips. And then I grab my square six and a half inch ruler, my Creative Grids ruler again. Square off one end, flip it over, and then I just start cutting my squares. And you align the horizontal and the vertical. Now the other tip I have is I have a little cling on here, it's a grip strip. Uh, we sell these and then I cut them into little strips and you can flip your ruler over to the four and a half mark and put the strip on there. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's a bumper there. There it is. So now when I go to do this, it'll stop at the four and a half inch mark and I don't have to constantly be aligning it and I can cut them very, very quickly. So I'm cutting them four at a time. I need 15. I will go ahead and cut an extra. So I have 16. There's no reason to cut it except I'll use it for a test block later. So, And then I label it up. And then I'll get a serving tray and I'll stack these up on the serving tray and then I can take the whole tray over to the sewing room, sewing table.
Adiós.
The next step is to sew each of the units into rows, which is for block two. These are all sewn into rows, and now we need to press them and then sew the rows into blocks. So for this quilt, there is a bulky, if I press it to one side, there will be a really bulky spot at each point. So I have decided I'm going to press these open to make that spot less bulky and the whole quilt to lay flatter. And how I do that, if you haven't seen my other pressing videos, is I use a strip stick. These come in multiple sizes. This is my little guy for the blocks, the rows, and I'll pull out the big one for the blocks. You only need one. I just happen to have one for each job. And then I use a purple thing and I just go into the seam and I press it open to the strip stick and then I just iron. And then I iron it flat. So now that is nice and flat because there's only a couple layers of fabric on either side versus all of this fabric being to the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and press all these and then we'll be ready to sew our rows. So let me show you with the longer stick. There's the 18 inch stick, which you can do with the 18 inch stick. And I'm going to switch over to it now is I can put more than one on the stick at a time. I'm going to go ahead and get both those started. Sometimes you just need to get into a rhythm and it'll go faster. Let's see, I'm not in the rhythm yet. I didn't open these. So here we go again. Here are all the rows sewn together and I'm going to go ahead and press all the seams open. Cautionary tale. Because this entire quilt is made with these flip and sew square and a square units, by committing to press them open at this point, I now need to press the blocks open, the rows open, the whole quilt top open. So that being said, when you decide whether you want to press your seams open or not, Think about how far you need to carry it and if you're willing to commit to that. Otherwise, you could have pressed these that way and then the center ones you could have pressed in and you could have just nested, nested, nest, nest, nest the seams. You could just nest those seams. Um, so you could have pressed it open or closed it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just know that if you do commit to pressing them open at this point, the whole quilt top needs to be pressed open, and that requires a little more effort than if you were to press it to one side or the other. The positive is you don't have bulk here at the points. The negative is it takes longer to do it. So you can decide when you do this quilt which way you want to press them. I'm going to go ahead, get these all pressed open, and then move on to assembling the blocks. And then we'll be back with both sets of blocks finished. All right, so these are all sewn. And this is block one. I did them out of order. I did block two first, then block one. Just the way it happened. So now we need to press these because if I press this now, I've got way too much bulk again. Um, so I'm going to, and I've already pressed all these open, so now I'm going to press the long seams open. So if you look here, I, I stitched that closed even though it needs to stay open. So if you have that happen and you don't want to have this weird twist that can become a bulky spot, you just clip it up to the sewn line and there you go, fixed. 
just don't clip through the sewing because then you have to resew it. Okay, so there are the blocks. That's block number one. And here is block number two. And we're ready to sew these into rows. So here's a tip on how I do this. So if you look at the pattern, it is one, two, three, four, five across versus one, two, three, four, five, six down. So most of us will sew them into rows and then we have to sew the six rows together. I'm a speed demon, so I sew the six together and then I only have to sew five rows across. Doesn't change anything except how you do it. And for me, that feels a little faster. So I'm gonna sew them into five, row, five columns with six blocks in each column. And then we're ready to put the top together. So here we have the rows, and because I, the way I press everything open, I now need to press my own rows open, the blocks in the rows. So that's what we're doing here. So I just work one block at a time. Press, slide it off, press again, start on the next one. And then I'll have to do it again for the rows, but the plus side will be, it'll be a nice flat quilt. And my quilter will love me because she won't be hitting bumps if she's quilting this on the long arm. And there we go. How flat. So I just need to make four more rows and I'm, or columns because I'm going to sew them vertically first and then sew the columns together. And we're ready to put the top together. So here is our chocolate covered cherries quilt all finished. It is super large. It's bed size so it's a little hard to film it but I wanted to share it with you. And then let's get closer. You can see the quilting that Sue Mitchell did on it. We had her do an all over of roses. You can see how just pretty that martyr, martyr. You can see how pretty the mitered border is. Get a close up of what the blocks look like. So this is a pattern now available. The fabric is Ruby from Maywood Studios which is also shipping right now, so you can have the pattern and fabric before you know it, and you can make chocolate-covered cherries for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this video on this project, and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below, or tune in for more of our quilting projects step-by-step. Step. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find the Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.